Hello, friends. Welcome back. Today, we're going to title case a sentence. Return the provided string with the first letter of each word capitalized. Make sure that the rest of the word is in lowercase. For this purpose of the exercise, you should also capitalize connecting words like the and of. So I'm a little teapot, needs to return a string, and each of the initial letters should be capitalized. Uh, short and stout should be recovered so that instead of it having this uh, cadence of um, capitalized and lowercase letters, it should just be capital short, and, um, S, capital S, and then H-O-R-T, lowercase, and uh, capital A, lowercase N-D, and then stout. So it, we actually want to make sure that we're um, not capitalizing that. So what we can do is I'm just going to create a, we're going to say let the result equals an empty string. And then I'm going to say for their I, or we're going to say we're going to let I equal zero. Um, uh, let's go words. No, do we want to do it that way? Yeah. We're going to say let words equal to be equal to the string dot split. And so what happens if we console log the words? Return string. I is less than words dot length. I plus equals one. So here, if we were to, call, so now we've split the characters up into individual arrays. And so what do we want to do? So we've got the words, we've got uh, words broken into an array. And then we want to say, uh, with each word, what we want to do is capitalize the first one. If I is equal to zero, we want to say the result plus is equals Oh no, this is the, so this is going to get us the word. So we're going to say let the word equal to words at position I. If, and then what do we want to do? We want to push onto the result string. So then we're going to create another loop, like a, a nested loop, and we're going to say for, we're going to let J equal zero. J is less than uh, the word dot length. You see, I've extra, extrapolated, extrapolated it here so that the word is going to be equal to out of the first one, and then J plus equals one. So now we've made a nested loop, and if we were to console.log this um, word dot, or word at position J, you're going to see we get an individual letter for each one. Um, so <clears throat> if uh, J is equal to zero, which means if we're on our first one, then we want to have the result add in the uh, word at position J capitalized. And at the end here, we want to return the result. Result. Oh, and so we want to console.log this as well, because currently, the result uh, is what we should be def returning. Okay, so word at position J. So I'm just going to console log the word to see what's happening. I'm a little, 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 t, 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 pot, pot, pot. Okay, so we're iterating through that right, that correctly. Now if we go to j, that means we're going to be at that one. So if j is equal to zero, word.j.capitalize. Okay, capitalize is not the right one. So capitalize uh, first word in JavaScript, first letter. Okay, cool. So we have to pass it in this way, capitalize F. To uppercase. There we go. So I'm going to go back to 
here. And we want to go console.log like two upper case. Okay, cool. So now we're pushing on to the result array. I'm a little teapot. So we've got all the right letters. Now, what we want to do, we can say else, and if the if we're not at the first character of the letter, we can go result, and then we plus minus add word at j dot to lower case. And now we should be returning this guy. Okay, cool. And then with each break, we want to add a pause or a space. So at the end of the for loop, we want to say the result plus equals an empty space. And that gives us, I'm a little teapot that's all written out like that. And we can get rid of the console logs now. Um, looks like we're also console logging the words. We don't need that anymore. And now we've got, I'm a little teapot. And so that looks cr correct. If we were to do the short and stout example down here, it looks like we're getting the right answer. And then it, this here is my handle, here is my spout. This is all capitalized in the string that we're passing in, but in the string that we're coming out with, it is the right answer. If we run the tests, it doesn't look like they pass. Um, so I think actually what's happening is our result has a space at the end of it. Yeah, that's why it's not passing. And then so we could say dot pop. Um, what's the remove last character of a string? Yeah. Result dot slice zero to the result dot length minus one. And so now we don't have a space at the end. Okay, so this is not the most efficient way of doing this, but basically we're just iterating through and we're saying if we're on the first character, then you add that to uppercase. Otherwise, we just put the lowercase element on there and then we're adding a, a space at the end. Um, we don't want to add that, we don't want the space at the end on the last character, so we're just going, because we've already added it on there, we're taking it off in our return statement. Now, there's probably a better way to do this. We could say, um, uh, if, um, let's see here, words.length is equal to i. Then if words.length is not equal to i, then we add a space in there. Now, how does that work? This makes it so that uh, if we're at the last word, then the, the words.length is equal to i, and therefore we don't pass that in there. And so then we can s remove this uh, slice in there. Oh, but that didn't work words.length minus one. And now the st stout, the spout won't be in there because we're not adding it in because we're at the end of the result. So that would be a way to do it without having to just remove the last character of the result. And then we're only adding to the result the way that we want it to run. So anyways, that's just a little bit of refactoring. Now, again, there's gonna be a, a million different ways of doing this. I can think of some uh, JavaScript built-in um, string manipulation tools that would be really, make this really easily. But this is basically writing an algorithm structure. And I think that it makes sense to kind of learn to write algorithms like this, especially when you're in your beginning stages of uh, computer programming. So yeah, the test pass. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.